people, I am Bharat Acharya. Welcome to our new video. Today we are doing this extremely requested topic from students, DMA controller interfacing with 8086. Yes, it's a, going to be a big circuit diagram. What you see over here is just the outline of it. The intricate details I am going to draw as I explain it to you because that's how I like to do it. What's the point of drawing the whole diagram and then just pointing at things and explaining? We are going to explore the diagram together. Now before we start, what is DMA? Tell me. Direct memory access. What does it mean? It means transferring data directly between memory and I.O. without the involvement of MUP. What is the advantage of DMA? Is there any advantage of doing it? Is there any point in learning all this? Yes, that's the question we always answer before we start a topic. You should know why you're learning something. Then the whole interest towards learning it is much more. And DMA is something so close to you. It happens all the time on your devices. That's the reason why transfers are so fast. So I just said it. The advantage of DMA is that it's extremely fast. A, it's fast because the transfer is direct from memory to I.O. or from I.O. To memory not via the microprocessor so instead of taking two cycles every operation takes one cycle that immediately makes the transfer faster moreover this is a if you can answer this I'll be very happy what's the second reason why DMA is fast it's a hardware based transfer you're using a dedicated chip for doing the transfer called the DMA controller tell me the chip number yeah, 8237, don't try to peek, 8237 slash 8257, both are DMA controllers, so both are practically the same, the interface is also practically the same, just one signal that changes, anyway, so we are using a dedicated hardware to do the transfer as opposed to MUP, transferring between memory and IOF, MUP has to do it, that would be a software based transfer, now in a software based transfer you write a program, so what happens? Majority time of the program is wasted in fetching and decoding the same instructions over and over again in the loop. So more time than actually transferring the data, MUP wastes in fetching and decoding instructions. And all of that is avoided if you use DMA controller because it's a dedicated hardware only to do data transfers. It doesn't need fetching and decoding of instructions to tell it what has to be done. So the transfer speeds between MUP based transfers and this circuit, DMA based transfers, there's a world of a difference. Next time you do a bulk operation in your phone or in your computer where you transfer songs, albums or movies etc on a pen drive, big notes etc, so, so, and so on and so forth and the transfer takes place instantly, tell yourself you know why it's happening, it's happening so fast because you're using the method of DMA and <laughs> This is the circuit that does it. Now, first, let me just introduce to you what all is there in the circuit. Yeah, it's a big diagram, but don't get overwhelmed by the size of it. That's how circuit diagrams are. You, if you've been my student and you've been learning everything from me, circuit diagrams look very big on the first impression. And that's what intimidates students. It scares them and students just move away from them. But if you can isolate parts of the circuit and understand them each one individually and then join the big picture together, things become much easier. When we did min mode and max mode, I told you, if you know min mode, max mode, you know 50% of every circuit diagram. Because in this humongous diagram, this much part is the min mode of mu p itself. So if you know how to draw minimum mode properly, you know how to draw this. This is I.O. mapping and decoding, which we have done for every chip. If you know it for one chip, you know it for all. So we isolate this and learn. We isolate this and learn. We know what DMA does. Tell me what are the main signals? It gives hold. Mu P releases the system bus. Mu P gives HLDA. DMA controller becomes the bus master and then does the transfer. So the two main signals over here which have to be shown are hold and HLDA. Now, if you paid attention, what did I say? DMA controller gives hold. What are the next line? Mu P releases the system bus, correct? Making the DMAC, the DMA controller, the bus master. Now, all throughout the syllabus, we just casually set this line. Mu P releases the system bus. Today, in the circuit diagram, you'll understand what's the meaning of releasing the system bus. It's not like the bus goes somewhere else. But the control of the bus is removed from the Mu P and passed on to the DMA controller. And when DMA controller finishes its operation, it removes its control from the bus and the MUP is again the bus master. So how does this bus switching happen? That is the core of the diagram. That's the essence of the diagram. Everything else is just the periphery. The essence of the diagram is to understand the switching between the bus masters. So how does that happen? I'm going to show you that. The other components of the circuit, if you know min mode, you are familiar with them. What is this? A to A for clock generator gives clock reset ready. Latches. Trans receivers. Now you know how many latches are required in any circuit of 8086? Three latches. Normally we show the three latches together, but if you notice, I've shown two latches over here. 
one latch separately. There is a reason why it's drawn like that, which we'll come to very soon. 8286 is your transceiver. 3 is to 8 decoder for control signals. This is the DMA controller which has its own latch. What does this latch do? That also you'll come to know very soon. Anyway, so this is the outline. This is what we're going to learn in this whole uh, lecture, part by part. Now you want to watch this entire video, come on my website, www.bharatacharyaeducation.com. The link is given down below. All you need to do is first of all, click on that link. The site opens, register yourself as a user. You will see lots of courses over there. This video, of course, is there in the course of 8086. So select 8086 course. Right on the top, you will see a button called subscribe. Click on that. As soon as you make your payment, the course becomes active. It's an extensive course. There are about 60 videos in 8086. It's our biggest course, high most subscribed course also. Uh, we cover everything right from the beginning, introduction, segmentation, banking, architecture, flags, addressing modes, the entire instruction set. There are about seven videos on the instruction set. There are about 10 videos on programming where I do programming on the board also, programming on the computer also, on the simulator which you do on the pra in the, your college practicals. Then we have the full theory of 8086, minimum mode, maximum mode, circuit diagrams, timing diagrams, all the peripherals, 8259, 8255, 8254 and 8237 DMA controller. Interfacing of 8237 is a topic many universities would not touch earlier, but syllabus keeps changing. They keep getting more advanced. Of late, I saw many requests coming for this interface. That's the reason why I've pushed in this video. Hope you enjoy learning it. Now, other than that, other than getting these videos as a part of your subscription, you get PDFs with every video without fail each video has a link right on the top called view notes as you're watching the video you want to read some point you want to read some paragraph click on the button view notes the pdf opens up all the theory that i'm explaining is there in the pdf circuit diagrams all explanation if it's a program then the whole program with the logic with the uh, what do you say comments etc plus you get pdfs of viva questions as an engineering student, you know how important it is. And you get PDFs of this new thing that has started, the new trend, MCQs, multiple choice questions. Many universities in the past few years are moving. I know firsthand Mumbai University has done it. Pune University did it about six, uh, six seven years back. And so, across, so and so all over India, this change is happening, which is good. Universities are moving from written exam pattern to MCQ pattern, which is so appreciated. Finally, I, I really like that because MCQs is something where you can really test a student. Written answers, big, those two page, three page theory answers, you can mug up and write even without understanding it. That's a sorry state, but people do it. Those who don't understand it, what, they still have to pass. But MCQs, you cannot mug up. Anybody can come up with a whole new set of MCQ questions. It's all based on your understanding. You understood the subject well, you can tackle the MCQs. So you get preparation for that also. Entire bunch of MCQ questions, which we keep updating up in tune with what is being asked in the best universities every year. Okay. Most importantly, you also get direct access to me. This is my WhatsApp number. Whenever you have a doubt, once you're my student, text me your doubt. As soon as I'm free, if I'm free at that time, immediately I'll reply. Otherwise, by the end of the day, I reply to everybody or at least as many as I can. Okay. Hope to see you there. Wish you all the best. Do well.